With songs of praise, hundreds of people gather in churches around the state every night of the week to take part in Celebrate Recovery. Anonymity is required, just like Alcoholics or Narcotics Anonymous. And like AA and NA, Celebrate Recovery follows certain principles. Principle four, openly examine and confess my faults to God, to someone I trust, and to myself. But at the core of Celebrate Recovery is Christianity. Hello, I'm Jack. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ because he's the reason I can celebrate recovery. We value Alcoholics Anonymous because so many people have found healing there. But the thing that is unique and that brings power to Celebrate Recovery is because it's based on Jesus Christ. Norma Murphy started the first Celebrate Recovery program at Southern Hills Baptist Church in Tulsa 10 years ago. When we started in 2002, there were no CRs, and today there are 65 Celebrate Recoveries um, in Oklahoma, and with over 4,000 adults, children, and teenagers in Celebrate Recovery every week. Norma says CR is for anyone with hurts, hang-ups, and or addictions. Do you actually see people come to you that are in the throes of addiction? Every week. Ken Poston came into the church under the influence of narcotics. I went through numerous drug rehab programs, Cocaine Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and they would work temporarily. Ken says the night he came to this church, Jesus Christ removed his addiction. Now I know I'm no longer alone. Uh, I know that I have a family larger than any family I could have ever dreamed of. Ken says it was by the grace of God he was never arrested before he was saved. Others joining him to talk about Celebrate Recovery have done time behind bars. I had a very heavy crack cocaine addiction. I was using anywhere from $800 to $1,000 a day habit. Um, and I was done. And so I turned myself in for a violation of probation and went to jail. Withdrawals from heroin, because heroin is a drug that is both physically and mentally addictive, um, and the withdrawal symptoms are really se severe. So um, at one point, I just decided that I was going to rob banks to support my habit. Both David Jones and Deanne Watford are involved in prison celebrate recovery programs. With the decreasing budgets and such, um, where it used to be that we were knocking on the prison doors to get in, now they're knocking on the church doors inviting us in. I will tell you personally, since we've been doing this, which is well over a year, last year we had a client base of 105 clients, and none of them have reoffended and are in recovery and serving the Lord. Lee Ann Easteam was addicted to meth for 20 years. She did three separate stints in prison. The last time she was behind bars, she was introduced to CR, and someone from CR was there for her the minute she was let out. They just draw you in, and, and they're there to help you, support you. You have, it's a second family, you know. Norma says people are referred to CR by the courts and through other avenues. Do we have people come, they're referred many times by um, counselors or treatment centers, um, friends and family who have heard about it. The Shining Light Church also hosts Celebrate Recovery meetings. Pastor Dixie Pebworth says the church provides housing for those who want to change their lives. What we have is four apartment complexes and we have over a hundred apartments that we utilize for sober living. Pastor Dixie was a drug dealer and served a six-year prison sentence. Drugs is a, is a spiritual problem. It's not a, a physical problem. Uh, if you take the methamphetamine uh, ec epidemic that's going on, meth and the cooking of meth is like a witch's potion. Uh, there are certain things you have to do at certain times in order to get the outcomes. And what it is, is it's, it's a sorcery, and it's like witchcraft. Dr. Melanie Spector believes addiction is a brain disease. I'm a behavioral scientist mm -hmm. and a licensed alcohol and drug counselor, and I believe in the power of the therapeutic alliance and group therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy and helping the person understand 
what addiction is. She can't speak to the effectiveness of faith-based programs, but Michael Bros, who's the executive director of the Mental Health Association of Tulsa, believes therapy and faith-based programs can work together. AA, NA, meeting, any 12-step that's not faith-based by definition, if you look at the 12 steps, they're based on biblical principles. Uh, so I think sometimes people forget that, um, that it has a, a spiritual origin. His executive assistant is Kimberly Cummings. She found herself behind bars on charges relating to her meth addiction, which began at age 16. I used all day, every day. I had a meth lab in my house, so I was exposed not only externally, but also internally to the substance. At the time of booking, Kimberly only weighed 98 pounds, and she says she was in terrible mental and physical condition. She is pictured here with her children three months later. Kimberly says she received healing from God while behind bars. I had no detox period. I didn't have any um, uh, cravings for any substances, and I was using several substances at the time, not only meth, but instantly as soon as I was incarcerated, and I just felt that healing. Kimberly underwent traditional therapeutic counseling, but also became part of Celebrate Recovery. I just feel like it's that faith-based community just wrapped their arms around me, and then I had the experts on the, over here as well that were teaching me what psychologically was going on and what behaviorally was going on, so it was both and. The need for treatment and recovery programs continues to grow. According to the Oklahoma Department of Mental Health, substance abuse is the number one public health issue in the state with an estimated cost of nearly $7 billion annually.